If I had a do-over on this one, I would watch the sunset from right here, the first peak after the steep climb, just half a mile in. This spot is ideal because of 360 degree view and the short direct path to bring you up here in time for sunrise or back down as soon as the sun dips below the horizon at sunset. The higher summit has a nice view too, but it's actually less open than this. Other than the climb, your biggest problem here will be which way to look because there is so much to see, but at least there are no bad options. The climb up is steep with a large drop on one side. It might not be for everyone, but there's usually enough room to keep a good amount of space between you and the edge. It's hard to complain with views like this, but they don't exactly help with concentrating on your feet. The trail is fairly straightforward up to the first peak, once you get away from the social trails by the parking lot and make it to the base of the mountain. There are a few of these loose areas with the switchback directly below you, so please be careful not to give your hiking neighbors a rocky shower. Whether you love or hate rock stacks, you have to admire the patience whoever built this one had. I wonder if this is just a fun challenge or a symptom of boredom waiting for someone. Once you get past the first peak, the trail gets a bit harder to follow. Some places have a clear winter, but in many areas, the social trails seem just as established as the main trail. So a GPS map can be very helpful. The wild berries were prolific here and so good. This is a dog-free trail, so you can be reasonably sure that they haven't been peed on here. This was the roughest spot on the way to the second summit. It was only a small scramble, but one that required me to use my hands. There was an alternate route, but I believe it was a social trail because it was on steep, muddy slope. Since it isn't a durable surface, over time it will wear away, potentially creating a dangerous trail, erosion, and or unstable terrain around it. There are several organizations that work hard to maintain these trails, and I was actually up here to volunteer with the Washington Trails Association. They do a really good job of teaching and make you look at some of these places in a very different way. It is hard work and may not sound like fun, but you might be surprised what kind of games moving dirt can turn into. I have learned so much and met some really great people. See the links below for more information and hiking resources. One thing I was not expecting tonight was the sun. I had my sunglasses, but I left my hat in the car and deeply regretted it. For much of the hike to the second peak, I had full sun in my face. So don't make my mistake and be prepared. I took a quick look around the second peak and then hurried back to make sure I had time to get down safely before the sun faded. Golden hour is awesome, but please be aware of your abilities and safety. I originally wanted to do this as a sunrise hike, but since I hadn't been here before and wasn't familiar with the terrain, I decided a sunset hike would be a safer option. Now that I've seen it, I feel that I would be comfortable with either. I just wouldn't want to do it in pitch dark. If you do sunrise, the sun may be directly in your eyes for some of the climb down, so that may be another consideration. As long as you have clear views, any time of day up here will be beautiful. The sun had dipped below the horizon, but everything still seemed to glow, and there was a strange warm wind coming up the side of the mountain as I hiked down to my car and my home for the night. Car and RV camping is not permitted up here, but there are some areas and campgrounds nearby, so I was able to be in bed in under 30 minutes and back at the parking lot for sunrise the next morning. Thank you for joining us on this adventure. There are hiking resources below and information on free ways to help support this channel. The easiest is liking and subscribing. Thank you, happy exploring.